So, after a very long time, uh, welcome to yet another episode of the People, Passion and Purpose podcast. Uh, so, this episode has been a long time coming and, uh, you know, to kick off the next wave of conversations, uh, we have uh, we are a very close uh, uh, friend. We've met, I think, only twice uh, in, in, in person, but it's been uh, almost as if I've known Anusha Ma'am for quite some time. And uh, she's a very interesting personality and we had a very long conversation over a metro uh, ride from uh, UEC back to our our houses. So here she is uh, with us. Thank you and welcome, Anusha Ma'am, for this uh, podcast with us. Hello, sir. Thank you so much for invite me, inviting me to this. Like, uh, even though we met one before two days, like, it was, uh, the conversation was so uh, delightful and uh, you provoked me in many ways. Like, what are the other ways I can explore? Because I'm a person like which I always look forward for something where I can learn. No matter at what stage I am, like, I keep learning from people and I do observe by them. So, like, I had a great time meeting you. Fantastic. So, now that... Uh... You know, that that context has been set to the audience. Uh, you know, if I were to introduce you, I, I know you as this uh, fantastic uh, facilitator who is a natural uh, working with uh, students, kids uh, and all that. And also, uh, you are somebody who has a gift of the language. Uh, you have done multiple facilitations with schools, colleges, other workshops. If that's the space that I know of. Uh, but if the, you were to introduce yourself to the audience, how would you do it? I mean, it's an open question for all, all people who come to the podcast. You are to define yourself or you are to introduce yourself. How would you do it? Uh, more than introducing myself, I want people to remember Anusha as a person who never gave up. Wow. Uh, so I want people to uh, identify her. Oh, it is she. She's the one who didn't give up. I want that uh, to be my identity. Uh, because like we all have uh, challenges, hurdles, and um, more burdens also like from our day one, right? When we are into the world, learning everything, how to crawl, how to walk, how to speak, how to mingle, Yes how to communicate everything. Uh, so uh, what's my problem is I'm a person. Now I'm speaking to you uh, with some empathy and um, with some sort of uh, self-confidence. These all the things which I learned from my failure. Because I'm a person like um, who, uh, who just can't speak in front of 10 people. But today I'm working as an assistant professor, I'm working as a facilitator, I'm doing my career counseling, soft skill trainer, I'm a professional artist, and much more added. So it is not a uh, piece of cake for me. Because like everything for each step, I face a lot of hurdles. And uh, each time I was a person who fell down. And uh, one more thing, like uh, maybe in... Uh, <laughs> Uh, in this camp, uh, you may not be able to see my full figure. I'm quite slim. And that was my another disadvantage for the people to comment. Right? So everything, the way I look, the way I speak, my voice, the way my perceptions was, everything was challenging because I was quite different from others. But the one thing which I always pushed within me was like, if not, if you're not able to do this now, then when? Mm -hmm. And there were days like where I used to think uh, like, okay, fine. It's not my cup of tea. Let's give up. But some days I even push myself so harder. Why don't you try just for one more time? What if you get succeed? So that you will not regret that you didn't try for one more time. All right. So these were the small little things which pushed me forward. So as a um, student, like uh, during my master's or my undergraduate, actually, I am mean, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, this is Anusha. I have uh, completed my master's in commerce and management. And I have been working into, uh, like, uh, I'm into a pro teaching profession from past nine years. I have been working as um, assistant professor. 
and then i had a career break due to my maternity then where covid hit happened then i had a break for a year then i rejoined as a trainer and i moved into soft skill training verbal training and especially this public speaking with this kiddos nowadays it has been like more of challenges okay what else i can do for them to come forward because i connect to public speaking so much because this is one of the part which i scared like a hell in my life stage fear was uh, if i am able to overcome stage fear then that day was my big day then I, there was a reason uh, like if i am alive then i'll be very happy that was my biggest goal okay so now it was like okay is this it all for that i scared so much <laughs> so yeah so i am into that i am a career counselor as well i'm um, i'm uh, like uh, in from in my very early childhood i had a uh, very deep interest with artworks so i started practicing more and more i am a professional artist now from um, practicing it for more than 15 plus years going on like i usually explore whatever the new platform new sort of artworks i can explore so this is my brief introduction apart from that i'm a proud mother of a 3 years old kid <laughs> so this is what i am so when i speak about public speaking is stage fear i still remember my uh, one of my um, seminar during my bcom days i still remember the topic also because that hit me so hard <laughs> uh, my combination was bcom with ca the ca belongs to computer application here computer application so okay. bcom with computer application yeah so there was a topic which was i was to talk about algorithms and flow chart i prepared for it for 2 hours okay i practiced in the front of my mirror for more than 10 uh, 10 times each time literally i shiver i struggle with words so it was like that so i prepared well and uh, i was a um, uh, well good student like uh, above average student so i had no issues with the faculties and all so i went to uh, give my seminar literally my body is shivering literally like you can see me a person moving front and back <laughs> i was so nervous i prepared but i was forgetting my things and my friends were like okay you can do it that's why the friends for uh, life right so they were like okay you can friends. do it even if you forget that's okay they were cheering but there was uh, i don't want to mention that uh, friends name because even she doesn't know that she pushed me to this extent <laughs> she was just laughing at me since i was shivering she couldn't control her laugh she was laughing at me that one thing hit at me so hard i cried for days like why am i not able to overcome that why is that stopping me so that i took it as a challenge no matter what sort of competition it is whether i am into it or not i'm going to participate only then i'll be able to overcome my fear so that's when the process happened then again uh, teaching profession is not my uh, cup of tea uh, my mom was a accounts manager even now she is a accounts manager in an mnc uh, uh, every day you will be we will be hearing our parent stories right like this happened in our office how i uh, balance the profit and loss how i gain this so she was so enthusiastic with that but that day I, my mind was like no not in the i am not a person for the papers documentations filings so i did my masters in commerce the other option i had was teaching practice okay if not commerce let's try this i went into teaching practice in i did my masters in krish university bangalore uh, here there was one um, in our academics there is one uh, strict rule that we should complete our uh, final year project as well as we should complete our 30 hours of teaching practice that is like as a masters we will be getting a mentor where we will need to give 30 hours of teaching to our bcom students mm -hmm. so that was again it was like a hit 
I can't stand in front of 50 students. I can't raise my voice. My voice was low. Even though if I scream, they can't listen. I used to cry for days. Like if I, whenever I give teachings, these trainings, and then I think, oh, come on, I know from where, from where you, you have been reached here. So that, that's a kind of self-respect we get on ourselves, right? Some sort of self-confidence. So those 30 hours of teaching practice, I used to uh, ask help from my friends for the preparation, for everything. So I'll be waiting for that one hour. I'll be waiting from full day. Like I should not shiver on stage. That was my only one thing I keep manifesting was. I should not shiver but that never happened <laughs> so like my mentor understood that it's my problem then she gave she used to give assign me with some other task and all somehow i cleared uh, then after my masters i applied for a college immediately i got in even during the demo i was so nervous then uh, it took me three months after joining into the college it took me three months to accept that I can teach without nervousness. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, but uh, nobody taught me the tips also. Like, what are the things you can stay back? How you can come out of your fear? What things you can nervous? Where you should have eye contact? So if you're shivering or if you're lacking out of words, what are the tips you can do? I was not aware about it. Everything is almost through self-learning and through reading a lots and lots of books. Like there were days I used to read books throughout the night, throughout the day without sleep. So, so through mm -hmm. that. So now when I give this um, etiquettes or communication skills, public speaking and all, guys, I know what you feel. Like the students will come, no, like, ma'am, you can't understand, ma'am, how I feel. No, you don't have rights to say that. I literally know how you feel. Yeah. So I have a connection. Yeah. So since I have it, I'm just loving my job. Well, that's beautiful. So beautiful journey. So what I heard was friends uh, played an important role. You are you're consistent with whatever you were doing. You're passionate about whatever you want to do. You took like, you know, whatever came your way as a challenge. A lot of very interesting learnings because prior to this, you were asking, saying, I don't know if people will find uh, uh, interest in whatever, you know, you are sharing. There's definitely a lot of interesting things that you're sharing. You also brought up one very interesting topic that you said uh, nobody thought you tips as to what to do when, you know, you're uh, going on public speaking. Uh, I I don't know if you if you will say yes to this, but I also was somebody who was very nervous with the stage. Uh, I think that now the stage is nervous with me, right? So it's it's do it's the other way around. So if I am That's on what stage, people are. Are... <laughs> so from your experience, what do you say is uh, what do you say are some of the tips that some people need to understand or you know be aware of when they're doing a first or like when they're nervous around public speaking. Uh, when it comes to nervous, don't look at others. See, uh, I go for uh, trainings for various places. Like sometimes when we go for the training, we will be having our known persons around us. And some uh, set of people who are just strangers and some will come to judge you. Let's see what she's going to teach. Just to judge you, judge your knowledge. And some will come with the intention, okay, in this session, I'm going to learn something new for sure. And some will come to update. They already know the basics. They will come to update, right? And some will be just the beginners. So like for them, like never look at the people, like have eye contact. I always say this for the uh, new beginners. If you're not comfortable with the eye contact, with the strangers, don't have. Don't make yourself uncomfortable. Wherever the place is, there is one point where you can focus your friend. It can be the wall of the room, or it can be, if it is an open area, it can be some tree, or it can be some cloth hanging down, yes? or it can be some toy a child is holding. So look at some point where you are comfortable for yourself, but never and ever look down or look on the roof, look 
uh, at your surroundings, it will show that you are nervous. It will show that you are not prepared. Even though you are prepared, you will not be able to deliver it and execute it properly. All right. If you are having that uncomfortableness, make yourself comfortable first. What, what you're comfortable about. See, for me, like comfortable, I can uh, link with uh, many things, like uh, especially my clothing. If I'm not comfortable with my clothing, I can't um, deliver properly. Like clothing in the sense, not the way, the type it is. It can be a sari or a blazer. It's not about that. The way you feel when, the, when your body touches your clothes, the warmth you feel, right? If, if I'm having that uncomfortable, then that is going to be disturb my entire session. So like that, everybody. And uh, uh, okay, I'll give the tip which I follow. Whenever I go uh, for the first session, for example, if I'm having meeting for the people for the first time, I'll wear my favorite dress. I don't know how many of you will do that. <laughs> I'll wear my favorite dress. That teach, because there will be some clothing or it can be some small accessory. Sometimes I'll pick a jewelry. Even today I picked a star which gifted by my husband. So that he's like, okay, if I even if I feel nervous, okay, he's there to tell, okay, okay, that's okay, you can do it. We will be having some connection with the people, right? So something like if 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 you're so much connected with your mother, wear her wear a sari of her. If you're connected with your dad, if your dad has gifted you a watch or something, wear it. It will like, like having a people who are surrounded with you, it will give you a next level of confidence. Sharing yeah. that you're not alone. We are with you. Absolutely. All right. So wear something uh, which uh, will encourage or which will motivate you. Like, you know, the people who are there for you it can be your best friend, it can be your partner, it can be your uh, community team, it can be your children. You will not believe sometimes in my bag, I'll be carrying my uh, son's toy. <laughs> it might sound funny, but I carry that. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever works for us, right? So whatever works for us that uh, yeah. makes us feel confident, so makes us feel something. secure. Mm. Yeah. So wear something which you're comfortable with. So uh, that what what happens you know, when your wear uh, are about it also shows our body language also, right? So when yeah. you're so comfortable with our clothing or accessories, we'll be very comfortable. So that can be avoided. Oh yeah, beautiful. I think that's that's a very interesting point to mention in terms of you know being comfortable as uh, this thing. So one of the tips I give people is uh, the audience doesn't know that you are you are nervous. <laughs> so if if you're making that first impression that uh, you are not nervous, uh, you you know what you're doing. I think the rest of it is is easily doable. So that that's been my uh, way of uh, looking at it because my first time I took on the stage, I think I was shivering. So I had to read a one-line news, news item for my assembly and I was shivering. And uh, now, yeah, it's it's almost a natural thing that I just take over the stage. It's, it's like that. So, and yeah. practice, I think there's, there's nothing uh, short of practice. Uh, and I'm happy to listen that <laughs> you at least read a one line of news in your school assembly. I used to escape. I used to find all the ways to escape from it. It took me <laughs> like till I joined my uh, Biko. It took me so while to speak. Like I'm good at cultures. But when it comes to the speech and all like even my school teachers who were in um, uh, contact like um, I I want to mention one one of my teachers name she is Miss uh, Sublakshmi she was my class teacher for 9th and 10th she took uh, physics and chemistry for us she was such a strict teacher so she knows that to, after some extent like uh, I will not be able to clear my 10th exam okay but I cleared it with distinction when I informed her she was like at shock <laughs> Did you clear it? 
And when she came to know, like after a long break, after my master, and all, then again I got touch with her. Like uh, during my wedding invitation and all, she she visited. She was being uh, to my wedding also. She was so shocked to see me as a professor because I'm a person who doesn't know to speak English properly, who is always the outstanding student in other way. <laughs> <laughs> So she said, okay. "Like, mm. are you for sure? Yes, ma'am, I am." <laughs> See, we never know the power of teachers. Their one line, like yeah. we might talk just like that, but one line, it will if it reaches the right student, no, that absolutely. one line can change their life. Absolutely, absolutely, that is true. That is true. Now, maybe I have two questions for you. One is uh, the the podcast is not complete without asking a story from your favorite story from your childhood. Second, now that you brought yes. the teachers into it, you can talk about uh, you know when you are a teacher, what is that you do uh, that inspires your students. I'm you know happy you take whichever question you want or whichever you want to take it first. Okay, so uh, childhood since I started, let me complete that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, one of my best childhood memory for the position what I am, I want to really thank all my teachers, like my, uh, especially my 10 teachers, uh, because I was um, never ashamed to share this. <laughs> my mom is a uh, very good student to the same teacher whom she uh, scored, I think, uh, above average marks in maths. Okay, with the same sir, she asked me to join for the uh, tuition for maths. Okay, I'm very bad at math. Out of 50 marks, I used to receive two. Okay, <laughs> so I was so bad at that. So one day uh, with uh, her recommendation with, uh, uh, you know, not a teacher-student relationship. No matter how they go, they will always... Uh, feel uh, grateful for the student and they will allow their children to grow. So like that, his name is Ramesh, sir. So he allowed me into his tuition. Maths is never and ever, even today, I can't do that. Usually you might be remember that uh, we might be um, by hearting the theorems, the Pythagoras and all. But in my case, I used to by heart, including the sums, steps. <laughs> So I was in that case. So I remember, so in one of the uh, like session on tuition, sir said like your mom has, in front of all my students, in front of all my friends that too. So your mom has been my best student. I have never seen such a worst student in my life. At that time, he was almost around 60 years, 50 to 55 to 60 years was his age. Uh, okay, so my only thing is I can't make him make myself to be his best student because no matter how much ever I try, I can't understand maths. So the only motive was like I need to clear it. So I mug up, honestly saying, I mug up all the sums. <laughs> but I scored a very good marks. Like I have reached around 82 something out of 100 in maths. He was so shocked. Is it your research that I just came to tell you that I scored better? <laughs> he was he was in shock. I was just laughing and I was in over the moon. Is yeah, something I achieved? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very, very that was one of my best childhood memories because it, it'll be inside within, you know, whoever <laughs> puts you down, whoever um, uh, insulted you, that too, at that age, friends is everything. Friends are everything, yeah. right? So in front of friends, they insulted you. Okay, come on. I should teach him a lesson. No, actually, he taught me a lesson to gain the good marks. That I'm realizing now, not at that age. <laughs> And that point, yeah, yeah that point. Was... That very interesting. Uh, uh, so, the... so uh, you know, any any other things uh, that that you know, it's not only one one memory that you have to share. Any others also, we are absolutely happy to hear. Oh, 
no, no, that's fine. But when it comes to my students, the one thing which I always um, enjoy doing is being with them, learning from them. I love learning from my students. Uh, because the generation, what we see now, we, we can't get updates anyway. Like no matter how good the AI is, the knowledge the students are having right uh, in the current generation, absolutely, absolutely. if you speak the ideology, the thought process they are having, it's like something huge. So like I always um, include in their experience. I'll ask them, okay, this is your perceptive. I'll put them into situation, like real-time uh, situations I'll give them. So if you're facing this, how you will think? How mm. your mind works? So I allow to hear those things. That's a very interesting thought because you're somewhere looking at them, not just, uh, you know, students. You're looking at them generally as equals or, you know, people with... Uh, yeah, uh, because there potential. are a lot of things to be learned from them, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now, which, which, is, which is the fastest, you know, even if you're teaching subjects, um, it's always easier to take them in the fold and say, you know, what what is that you've already learned? Sometimes we are... Uh, teaching them something that they already know. And that may be something that will bore them, that will mean they're switched off. Uh, you know, you are also not really happy about it. But uh, one thing I have in my uh, journey as a facilitator know, known that uh, it's always better to co-create rather than, you know, completely yeah. say, oh, this, I, I am the best, I am the subject matter expert. And now the relationship between the student and teacher has also been changed, right? Mm. The way during our school times or college days, the way we were looking at the teacher was like uh, something related to uh, um, studies or if you want something as a guidance, we used to look at them. But now like they, they want it as more into of... Um, friendly nature, they're looking for a well-wisher, they're looking for a companion. If even uh, like when, whenever we are having some personal issues, we are not sure whether we can share with them or not. But today the students come to us for the counseling. Yes. So it's all dependent. The entire uh, setup has been changed. So they are open. They're more open into their ideas. And they're more open in both the ways. If we haven't done our sessions properly, they'll say, ma'am, these are the things which we already know. It could be yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. See, when <laughs> we are getting direct feedback from them, no, that 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 will tell, okay, come on, today I did I didn't do something useful. I already thought what they know, which means uh, that yeah. I need to learn something. Absolutely. That pushes absolutely. us, right? Absolutely. It pushes us, it inspires us, it also makes us more creative to bring new new ways of uh, experiencing it, uh, expressing yeah. it. So that way it's a beautiful uh, experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, one of the other things that I also continue to remember from whatever you're sharing is, uh, you know, you, you said, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who didn't give up. Uh, I think that for all the podcasts I've, uh, you know, done the record and all the conversations uh I've, I've had never had somebody you know start off with that right so uh if you want to share that if you want to share a little bit more about that because i think there's it it, it can inspire a lot more people so that's that's the reason i'm asking uh okay like uh for the din giver i have uh very bad experiences in my life like as i said my career i don't want to start my career as a teacher in my teaching itself but uh, I didn't have any other option because I don't want to fall into the corporate world. That was very clear in my mind from my day one. So I took this as my challenge. I was not doing so great in my teaching career for in the first one year. Then I learned how the university works, how the management works. Yes. Then I slowly coped up. Uh, then um, uh, whenever I fail, like I was good in my classroom. I was not great at conferences, especially, especially this international conferences, national conferences, no, I was not at all great. I, I, I still remember a conference where I just went, instead of delivering my subject, I started teaching in the conference. So I was not yeah. sure what to be done, what not to be done. So these are all my learnings from everything. And um, I said, no, like I'm a proud mother uh, because my child, his name is Vihan. Actually, Vihan is my second child. I had a daughter before. 
she was with us uh, till her one year of uh, her age she was no more she had a uh, health issues so i undergone a, everything in life like i have seen her funeral i have seen depression what it is i have overcome it then again i didn't give up covid hit her i was into pregnant i was into my 6 months as or i was in my 5th month of pregnancy where i tested covid positive <laughs> then again uh, again the same labor went off during my labor i had a mild attack while delivering my son and the only thing i prayed was like i was in my different icu and my child was in different icu right so uh, when i was the the one and only wish i had is i want to see my son for one last time but today i'm with him it's 3 years he's going to turn 3 years next month so i didn't give up i feel proud sometimes like i might sound loud but there's big big lot of hurdles failures i didn't give up so that 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 is uh, amazing you know when when you like you said when you yourself have been through that journey and you see look back and even before anybody oh, else is appreciating it you are starting you have already you know said wow that that's that's a great experience when you survive through that and uh, yeah i think people who survive uh, their own internal wars Uh, are are better off uh, with because in the it. initial days i was uh, not open i was uh, inside a cocoon honestly mm-hmm. like i never used to meet people what people judges me what people ask me when is your next child because uh, me and my husband was very clear that we need time to heal it's not about um, give a child birthing a child is very easy according to me but growing with them is most important right i am really ready to grow with my child or or i am still in the trauma thankfully my parents and my in laws families were very supportive they understood how it works no matter how the societal pressure was they gave us the time we made them to understand so now whatever he does like Okay, f- come on! Like it, it's like growing again with him. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, that's why wherever there is a session, I'll say, "Ma'am, not more than ten days. I can't leave him and come." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I can completely understand that. But yeah, I think uh, you know, I, I'm just listening to all of this, and I'm like very inspired by this. And thank you for sharing uh, it on our platform. and i also love the vulnerability with which you uh, share it uh, so it's, it's it's not easy to share our life journey so so candidly uh, and uh, also to share it with you know you you revisit that memory and you come back so uh, thank you for sharing that with us i uh, see the one thing which i want to do is there are mothers right there are women uh, there is a lot of taboo no matter how fast the society is growing there are there is a community still who looks at uh, a mother as a woman no matter how good she is in profession how good she is balancing her professional life her work life and uh, personal life her, no matter how great she is as a mother there will be some gossip some taboo some myths which will be which we can't break the only one thing is we can't change the society completely i mean absolutely so in such cases live the life you want if they are judging you which means they doesn't know the entire story of your life it is you even i say this to my parents also even my parents doesn't know my entire life they are with me yes even they are with me today my husband is with me even till today but whatever i am facing within myself what is my confusions what is my worries what are my fears and what are my struggles i get only i can experience i can share with them right they are always there for me to share but they can't experience 
So Absolutely. when it is in such case, thank you. So when it is in such case, be gentle to yourself. Learn yourself. First come, understand what you are, who you are. Accept your flaws. Uh, this is something which I uh, accepted myself very late. That is after my daughter's loss only, I accepted my flaws. Before that, I was say, complaining about me. Okay, I should have done something so that I would have said, oh, no, this is what karma is all about. That's how it happens. I did my best. So there's nothing to regret. So for that, it takes a lot of courage to accept our flaws, accept our negativities, accept our weakness, where we are lacking. So when we are concentrating more on our growth, no, so we will be able, we will not find time to gossip about others. We will see the way where we can grow. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Oh, and, that's one uh, way. No, I think be being gentle with the self. Absolutely. Being kind, being gentle with the self. And I think also healing, yeah, what you also identified is healing is a journey. And uh, to a large extent, some of the uh, current generation and say, uh, you know, say the uh, 90s plus kids have also sort of evolved to that space saying, uh, do what works for you rather than do what works for everybody else. The general formula method is not working. And true, you know, you may have uh, every other person alongside with you in the entire journey. But then... Uh, you are the owner of your journey and how you experience it, whatever you experience is only yours and everything else is whatever you share to the outside world. And because I, I you know, when you were sharing that, the coach inside me was very, very happy saying, you know what, uh, it, it's it's your inner, inner journey that always matters, right? So, and everybody's inner journeys are very, very, very complicated. There are so many ideas, thoughts, uh, feelings, decisions, uh, question marks. So all of that, even though we may express it to others, uh, they cannot experience it. Only we are the ones who are experiencing it. And that Sometimes also at times can... makes... Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Sometimes they can stand in our shoes and think. They can yeah. give us uh, solutions. But what solution to be taken, that decision again in our hands, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Empathy is empathy is uh, something that is fantastic. But I think empathy is not equal to our lived experience. I think that's something that we uh, all, uh, to a certain extent, after some years of wisdom, you'll actually know, yeah, for them, it is very, very different. For me, from this point of view, it is easier to say, you know, you could have done this, you could have done that. So very, yeah. very uh, interesting experiences. And I'm sure, you know, we have uh, a lot more podcasts with us. It's almost about 40 minutes that uh, we've spoken. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, uh, you already said what you want people to remember you as, the one who never gave up. I think that uh, is something that I also learned a lot about whatever your journey has been. Uh, but if you had to share a few closing thoughts, uh, what would it be? Um, I want the people to start uh, being kind to themselves. And I'm not sure. We will say thank you to everyone for all sort of works. See, even after the end of this podcast, I'll be thanking my audience. I'll be thanking you for the opportunity, right? But how many of you have thanked your own self? Again, it's a question mark, right? Have you thanked yourself? I have asked this question to my students. Should I thank me for what? You should thank yourself because you have dealt with so many things. For example, take from today's morning. From morning you woke up till you go to sleep. Your body is coping with you. If you are putting healthy food, it's with you. If you are putting some junk in it, even though it's colding you inside, it's coping with you, right? For the fresh air you breathe, for the communication you do, like for the motivating you're going to do others, for the help you're doing for others. Others can thank you, but have you thanked yourself? Have you been grateful for yourself? Uh, journaling gratitude is something big, which has a uh, biggest impact in my life. I started appreciating myself for small things. 
for very small things that changed me the way i started looking into in the world like the world is so beautiful just we should have the eyes to see in that way maybe for that we should prepare ourselves full well, beautiful thoughts i think we've also uh, channeled the inner philosopher in so into anusha for this uh, particular podcast <laughs> yeah so oh, thank you sir. absolutely absolutely amazing and yeah thank thank yourself thank your body uh, thank you know thank you uh, thank the body for waking up uh, for being healthy for being you know now i think we sometimes forget that the body is uh, you know with us uh, most of the times our thoughts are on intellect saying how how is it working what's not working but the body is is a beautiful mechanism and i think it's also yeah. always uh, and, always a good time to think yeah yes and when we are sick we will come to know come on we are tired something happened to us that time we will take care of our body also but why not when it's functioning no absolutely, absolutely. so much of pain. Yeah, and then you don't have to wait for it to stop working or give you a warning signal for you to say thanks to <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 no i think that Better. also comes yes yes ma'am warning signals are the worst night nightmare can any person has so absolutely absolutely and yeah you don't have to wait for it you don't have to wait for the exam to study you can always study at any point of time uh, study for passion and uh, absolute interest and sometimes uh, in in uh, whatever your experiences have been whatever life has life comes your way and uh, i think you'll have to accept it uh, heal heal with that journey and go with that journey. Yes. yeah you have, you have some uh, see the only thing we can do is like accept whatever comes whether it's good it's not going to stay for longer time whether it's bad it's not going to be stay for longer time it's always the two sides of the coin right accept both in the same way yeah absolutely so thank you ma'am thank you for an amazing one hour with us uh, it's been a when thank wonderful you, experience sir. and there could be more podcasts so whenever uh, you feel you have a story to share all you need to do is give me a call and yes, we yes. can take this forward and sure. thank you for your debut on the podcast uh, i am very 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 inspired by all your stories the way you keep moving with life uh, all the best and uh, you know more podcasts thank you thank you thank you sir thank you for the opportunity you have given uh like even though we have were known for very less time the way you empathize the way you try to communicate and it's not about yes i know something it should be within my myself right? you try to share it to others like let them grow i know this thing okay you are, are you not sure about it i'm sure to teach you this is what the humanity is all about right so i am so glad to connect with you and to all the people who are watching this i want to say you something uh, sorry not something only one thing uh, if no matter uh, what age you are at you may be 10 20 or uh, 60 or 70 no matter what is your age if you feel something to start if your innocence is saying that okay i should have done it in my olden days okay come on you can't go back to your past life but you can start from now begin like do not fear but do explore because life is always about teachings and i always believe in this quote so much that there is a quote which mentions uh, life uh, never stops um, never stop teaching because life never sh- sorry i messed up never stop learning because life never stops teaching so that was one quote which i always remember because we should keep on learning because no matter what is your age no matter how what experience you have whether you are not even in position to learn life is never going to stop teaching it oh yeah absolutely absolutely yeah i think so never great, stop learning because life never stops teaching oh yeah so absolutely so i would absolutely. like to end with that yes. absolutely man thank you so much and looking forward so, to the okay. next podcast with you thank you